Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are tuned in to the J Moore Tech Talk Show, and we'll be starting momentarily. This is the place to ask those questions about PCs, technology, challenges with your iPhone, perhaps pairing it to your car, or maybe those smart devices that are supposed to make life easier at home or in the office, but just don't seem to. And now, please help me welcome the CEO and founder of the J Moore Connection Incorporated and the star of tonight's show, Mr. John C. Morley. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to the J. Moore Tech Talk Show. Uh, looks like we have uh, corrected some of our audio issues. I know last week we were having a little bit of challenges with that, but uh, I think we're under a uh, pretty good uh, way today, and uh, hopefully we'll have a great show. Well, listen, first thing I want to do is invite you, if you'd like to call us during the show, of course, you welcome you to do that. If you're calling between uh, when we're live on the air, which is 9 p.m. Eastern, to 9.57 p.m. on Thursday nights right here, you guessed it, right on the Starcom Radio Network. But if you should happen to miss us, you can just walk on over to jmor.com, hover over social, and then click on where it says J. Moore Radio. And if you scroll down there, you'll see something that says, um, listen to previous shows. Click right on that, and that'll take you out to our YouTube channel where you can play many of the shows uh, that we have right here uh, aired on the Starcom Radio Network. So again, if you'd like to call us, you, your friends, colleagues, associates, just go ahead and do so at 973-826-0981. That is 973-826-0981. So I know you're probably asking me, what are we going to talk about today? And that's an excellent question. You know, we talked a lot last week about the Internet of Things and how technology is really changing our world. It really is. But what I want to share with you is how technology is not only changing our world, but changing how people make money in our world. You might have heard about online and making money that way. Well, there are legitimate ways that you can actually make money with technology. And and I'll go through a couple of those. And um, I'm not going to mention any names specifically, uh, but I will go ahead and uh, give you some ideas of the types of ways that you can actually earn money uh, with technology. Uh, I'm not talking about fixing technology. I'm talking about using technology as a vehicle to help you be a conduit to make money legally. So when we talk about this again, if you missed us, you can reach us right here live on the Starcom Radio Network at 973-826-0981, Thursday nights, 9 p.m. to 9.57 p.m., only on the Starcom Radio Network. So last week we were talking a lot about how technology is shaping our world. We talked about Bitcoin. We talked about all these these other little words that maybe some of you haven't heard of before. But I think the most important thing is to understand the vision of where technology is going. And it is to make the world a better place. And it's also to make us more efficient, but to empower us to have a better quality of life. And I always said this to everyone is that when you use technology – and it empowers you, that is great. But when technology becomes the thing that runs your life, whoa, sit back there. Because technology should be something that allows you to have more in life. It should give you more time. It should free you up so you have the flexibility to do other things. And it should give you the peace of mind to do certain things that maybe you wouldn't be comfortable doing yourself because you didn't have technology as a guide. Now, when we talk about technology and we talk about what's happening, we talk a lot about the Internet of Things. You know I've mentioned that to you from water bottles to uh, using your phone as a GPS to uh, there are uh, what they call now the, the, f- the first ride with Garmin Varia now is out. Uh, it's a helmet that stands out from everyone else. It's designed to increase driver's awareness. It looks good. And it seems to be just a normal helmet. But the Lumos helmet, 
uh, is with brake lights and it has turn signals. So I think that's an interesting thing and it is Bluetooth powered. So, you know, uh, I don't usually mention company's name, but you guys all know Garmin, so it's no, no, uh, no secret to mention Garmin. But it's just interesting, you know, where things are going. So they have the Lumos helmet that was launched uh, on a fundraising site. And the helmet has integrated brake lights and turning signals. That's pretty cool. All right. The, so you have the, you have the helmet. Um, you have, um, you have the, the Garmin Varia, which is the, uh, basically the controller for it. Uh, but I think it's pretty interesting because, you know, we're starting to really figure out how to use multiprocessors uh, and these uh, technology devices to allow us to do things. Like, for example, on many of the shows, we've seen technology used to be able to facilitate something that we maybe couldn't do before, such as a animated T-shirt, which would normally cost millions of dollars to do R&D on. And now we can use certain microprocessors and these little kits to build them very inexpensively. Now... The thing about this, uh, this helmet, as I want to let you know, is that uh, USB is not supported anymore. But they have a, um, it's a custom uh, magnetic connector. And uh, many of the early users have said there were some problems with keeping it connected and getting it to charge. So uh, if, you lose, if, if you lose it, uh, I guess you're kind of toast. Um, so I hope the battery you know, doesn't explode like many of the other things. And... Uh, that would be more than a headache, but um, I don't know why they didn't use USB. But anyway, so the USB magnetic connector is a little type of device, um, but it's, it's able to uh, allow us to have our helmet and make it feel very robust. So the size is adjustable, uh, the helmet indicator, device system allows to allow you to know when you're making a left or right, things like that, you're braking. And uh, again, it's, it's a way to make people more conscious about safety in bike driving and give us something that's fun in the process, right? So that's just one example. But what I want to talk to you today about, or tonight, is I want to explain to you about how technology is being used, ladies and gentlemen, to help people make more money. Let's talk about some of them. You're familiar with a couple of uh, services out there that allow you to uh, request a ride from your mobile smart, mobile, uh, smart device, such as your iPhone or your Android. They use GPS technology, and they basically use a uh, pool of independent contractors, and you can sign up to be an independent contractor. And you basically log in when you have free time, and when uh, someone is looking to go somewhere and you're logged in in that particular area, you have like a minute and some seconds to, uh, to accept the ride. And then they even have built-in GPS that uses uh, Maps, the Maps, uh, Google Maps app, right on your phone and will navigate you right there so it links in. Uh, they check things like, you know, how far you are. They check things like, um, you know, when you arrive, they give you alerts. Um, when you arrive, one particular company that I like, uh, I've heard that when you arrive, it actually has a countdown timer. And if the person's not there by the countdown timer, well, <laughs> then, um, you know, the, basically the, you know, the, there, there is a, it's considered a no-show. The driver actually has to hit arrive. On some apps, they just touch it. On other ones, they actually have to slide it. I like the slide for the ability because maybe you'll make a mistake and tap it accidentally. I like the slide because you have to intentionally do it. It's not hard. The touch is a lot faster, but you can accidentally tap the button in your haste or moving the phone around or whatnot in the car. One thing I, I want to tell you is that the app is, uh, these apps that they have, I've seen them and they're pretty good. And there's a couple companies that use them now. I think there's about three or four. And so what happens is you'll be on the road. One particular company actually requires your car to be within three years or younger. And other companies don't really care. One company I have to commend, they even ask you for a full uh, checkpoint list, uh, safety list, and ask you to agree to that. They ask for things like your insurance, your driver's license, and many of them are even running background checks. So 
I think this is really great that they're doing this. And technology, I know, sometimes can scare some people. I realize that. I understand it. So when we use technology, we have to make sure that the people we're connecting to, let's say, have our best intentions at heart, right? So what happens with these apps is uh, you'd log in, you wait for your, your ride. Everything is all cashless. So what does that mean? That means there's no worry to have to exchange money in the car, and tips are all cashless as well. There's also a rating system, so other uh, people that are picking I can see what the, what the driver's rating was. Uh, so actually, you don't get to pick the driver, but you can see the rating, and then the driver rates the passenger, and the passenger rates the driver. Pretty interesting. I think this system actually has to do with the fact and uh, how, uh, how many rides you're getting. I think it has something to do with your priority. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I think it does. I know that in New York, if you are logged into one of these apps and you're literally sitting right on the street, this happened to a friend of mine, and you're sitting right on the street where the person's requesting the app and you're like five feet from them, you don't get picked. You don't get, you don't get the, uh, you know, the request for the ride. And that's bizarre to me. So there's only two reasons I could think this happens. One, maybe because the person's not a New York driver, they're giving it to someone else that is a New York driver, has more seniority. But I don't know. The other thing I thought of is that, hey, it just picks somebody, but it doesn't really pay attention to where the person actually is. So they just kind of pick somebody close, but they're not able to triangulate that well. Maybe the software needs to be rewritten a little better. So that's something there. And um, the thing about it is that the system keeps track of not only that, but if you go through tolls, such as like going to New York, the system will automatically keep track of the tolls and build them into the fare. Pretty neat system. So you can be a 1099. So what does a 1099 mean? It basically means you're going to pay taxes on the income you make. But the good news about the 1099 is that if you have a car lease or you have other business expenses that are needed to help you facilitate this part-time driving business or full-time driving business, then you're able to write those off. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't an accounting um, uh, show here, but if you make X dollars, let's just say for argument's sake, you made $500 for the month, argument's sake, and I could be totally off, higher or lower. And let's just say you had a car lease for a couple hundred dollars. Well, you could write the two, and then you'd only have the expense of the $300 that would be your sales because you would be able to write that off. What you can't do is make $500 and then have a car that costs $900. That ain't going to work, okay? So that's how it works. Uh, generally, the service tends to be very reliable. Uh, a lot of these services, some of them are better than others. Again, I'm not going to comment about that. But there are some companies out there that I feel they do a better job. Uh, they have a better quality of drivers. They seem to be a higher echelon. And also, I find that you tend to get nicer cars with a couple of these other companies. Now, there are some problems to make you aware of. The first problem is, yes, unfortunately, um, one of the busiest times is going to be around 11 o'clock till 3 or 4 in the morning. That's peak time for a lot of uh, driving companies. Why is that? That's because um, they, have, they don't have enough cars. All the cars are being used to drive it, so that's a peak time. So some companies charge two, three, and four times, and you see that as, like a, as a higher rate. So, for example, if your rate would be to go from here to point X and that was $10 and it was at the peak time, that might be $30 or $4 just for one way to that destination. Uh, also, uh, some companies charge more money for additional people. Some people have a discount. So when you have additional people, you're still paying more money than one person, but you're paying a reduced rate, a much more reduced rate. They have something called teaming or um, – uh, more like group rides or ride share, and that lets you save money because what they're doing is they're maybe going on a caravan. They're all going to the same place, uh, but they may not even be from the same location. They might be like four or five pit stops, like a bus stop, and then they're all going to the final destination of school or, in this case, work, or they're going to a mall or what have you. Now, the way it works is pretty unique, and that is because there's no money ever taken – 
you actually put your credit card or two in there. You put your email, you register it. And what I will tell you is if there's any issue with your credit card with a lot of these, let's say there's a fraud alert and there's a problem, well, a lot of these companies will deactivate your account like immediately. They are so on top of fraud that I think they should be commended. Others, not so much, but there are a couple out there that are. And that's, that's a great thing, ladies and gentlemen. That's really a great thing. And I want you to know that, you know, when you, you take these rides, all of the drivers, okay, so if you're a passenger, all of these drivers for most of these companies have gone through some type of a background check, some type. Some of them do more than others. And the nice thing about that is that you're getting in the car and you have the peace of mind that the person that you're going to be, who's going to be driving you is someone you could probably trust. The only caveat is that, you know, the people getting in the car, myself and other people, they don't have background checks run on them. You know, I, I, I think it would be nice that everyone that uses the system uh, to be part of the network would have to be background checked once. I think that would be great because I know they put the drivers through a lot, and I think this would make things uh, uh, pretty easy. So that's kind of what's, um, you know, that's kind of what's happening but they're not doing that right now. Maybe if there are challenges, hopefully there aren't. But I, I think I think it's definitely going to make life a lot um, a lot easier if they would. And this way, people don't have to worry. The driver doesn't have to worry that you're picking up somebody that might be a potential problem. Now, they have very good things like uh, nine one one, and then they have other their numbers you can call. Some of these apps don't even have a phone number. But when you call them, the only thing they will do is be there for like emergency. They won't be there for anything else. So a lot of them use like the app for contact and things like that. In fact, uh, one particular company, um, a friend of mine, this happened to when their app got deactivated because their card, not that it was bad, but uh, one of the card companies said, wait a minute, there's a, there was a, because what these card companies, what the car companies uh, do uh, for these drivers is they actually do a pre-authorization, usually about a third of what the cost of the route would be to make sure they have enough money, not a dollar, but like a third of the route costs. And then... So that happens, and what happened was this one particular person got in the car, and then they went from point A uh, to point B. They got out of the car. They then went to a store or a doctor's office. They then charged their visit or their purchases. Now they went to go request another drive again. The problem was it was declined. Their account was, um, the account was disabled because the credit card company had put a hold. They called the credit card company, everything was fine, and then once that was through, they told uh, – they sent an email. The only thing I wish they would have is a way that people that are not so tech savvy could actually call a number like, thank you for calling. If you're calling for a suspended account, press 1. If you've called blah, 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 something that would give them more of um, – oh, something like that, or maybe if they texted something and then they got back to them. I think it, they do check it pretty quickly, usually within five minutes, but I don't know. Email is not a very quick response. Okay, so that's kind of what's happening there, and more and more people are starting to use these services. Why? Well, people go to parties, and let's face it, they like to have fun, and uh, they like to have a drink, and when they have a drink, it's smart that they don't drive, and the rest of the friends aren't driving. Why have a designated driver? Why not have everybody be able to have fun, but then don't drive, right? And now everybody's safe. The one thing that's a challenge with these companies, and I've talked to a few people, is that if you have a passenger, maybe it's in the wee hours of the morning when it's this high peak time, and what happens is they maybe, I don't know, let's say uh, bring up their food <laughs> because they might be a little bit, let's just say they're not sober. <laughs> and um, it causes a mess in the car. Now, some of these companies have a policy that they'll pay for your car to be cleaned up to a certain amount and so much per year. Other companies won't do anything but they usually require a picture so that you know they can make sure it's legitimate. So that they are trying. Um, yes, you can make more money in the wee hours of the morning, but I think the problem with that is that when you make the more money, you have that risk of having somebody possibly bring up their dinner or their drink in your beautiful car or an upholstery or seat. So that's a slight challenge, and um, it's definitely something to think about. So some people, what my friend did is he actually purchased some of these little bags like you have on the airplane and um, solved that problem. And 
Unfortunately, though, one or two times, um, they used the bag. The other time, they couldn't find the bag, and, well, that was just a mess. Anyway, so I'm trying to give you guys, I guess, an understanding of technology, not just technology as we see it with you know, black and white, but explain it to you and how it affects people's lives. So I think that's what's great about our show. We don't just talk about how something gets turned on or turned off. I talk about how technology affects your life and other people's life and how it makes a direct impression on the actions or action taken because technology was used or not used. So the thing about this is that you can easily – fly into an airport, you can fly, get into a train station, you can be somewhere. Now, the thing about this is that when you request a ride, you need to be ready. Now, most of these ride people will be there within, I'm going to tell you, anywhere from five to ten minutes. If you request a ride and you're not ready and they show up, you only have like about a minute and a half, okay? Uh, some give you four minutes or five minutes. But the problem is some of these drivers, uh, this happened to me once, I wasn't really late. I was 30 seconds. I was walking outside my door, and he canceled my ride. I'm like, what? He canceled my ride because he got another fare and learned that they were going somewhere else. Now, you're not supposed to call the person to find out where they're going, but he found that they were going pretty far distance. So that's one of the bad things for the drivers is they never know whether they're going five miles or they're going 100 miles. They just don't know. But I think some drivers are rude, and unfortunately, they're going to do what they have to do to make a buck, even if they have to be rude to someone else. I'm not really in agreement with that, but a couple of drivers have done that, and you can put a complaint in about the driver and things like that. But you know, the bottom line is is that you know you can kind of get to know uh, certain drivers. So if there's a certain driver, you can cancel them. I will tell you though, if you cancel a, a ride, uh, you get charged every time you cancel. In fact. If you cancel within uh, a certain period of time, like if you cancel, um, let's say, immediately, not a problem. But if, if you cancel after a certain period of time, then that's, then that's uh, an issue. I think some of them, it's, it, might be, uh, it might be a minute, 20 seconds. It might be three minutes. I figure it was, but you can look it up for each one. But that's something interesting, you know. And I think these companies are really trying to give people their freedom and people that don't drive – people that want to be able to get a ride inexpensively because, I mean, you can get to an airport very, very reasonably. And the nice thing is is that um, it's like having your own personal driver. But sometimes some of the drivers are not, they don't all drive the same way. So that can be the challenge there. Um, I remember one time in uh, college, I uh, was at my dorm and the driver, basically, I was waiting there and I was outside early. The driver never came I called the car company. It was a yellow something car at that time. And I called the yellow cab or whatever. It was there in every city. And I called him. I said, hey, what happened? I said, I've been out here. He says, oh, we're so sorry. He says, you're still there? I said, yes. He says, well, the guy who used to live there before you last year, he would do this all the time, and then he would just not show up. He'd be no-shows. I'm like, oh, wonderful. So the person that lived here before decided they were never going to show up. I said, well, that's got to – I said, every time I call you, you know, you guys got to you know, you gotta show up. He said, oh, no, no, we got you, boss. No problem. So he sends the next guy out, no problem, and I uh, get, get in the car, and I'm going to the train station. And when I tell you that I had to hold on for dear life, I am not kidding you, ladies and gentlemen. I had to hold on to the car for dear life. A roller coaster would have been a calmer ride than what I went through on this, uh, this yellow cab. When we got there, um, he says, we're here, and that'll be whatever, and I pay him. And I was like, I was like yeah, we just about made it alive. <laughs> I mean, he was just swerving in, swerving out. What did he save me? Three minutes? Four minutes? I mean, I think in New York and a lot of these metropolitan cities, they like to drive fast because they feel they're going to go get another cab and bing, bing, bing. But, you know, if you're in the car longer, see, because you know why they do that? Every time the meter starts, there's a flat fee that, that starts when the meter, the meter runs. That's why they try to get in, out, in, out, and get as many fares started as they can. So these companies generally charge, I think, somewhere between 20 and 30%. That's how it works. And any of the tips that you acquire with these companies, you get to keep them 100%. So that's how that works. A lot of these companies will pay you on demand right to your checking account uh, through EFT, electronic deposit. 
So it makes it really easy and simple. In fact, some companies, you can actually, uh, they have a day and they'll make the deposit on that day. Or if you're making a certain amount of money and you say, hey, I've reached the minimum, which one company might be $50, you can tell the app to pay you right now and within so many days you'll be paid. As opposed to waiting till the certain day and then you still have to wait so many days. So that, that's kind of how that works. They call it express pay. And they actually charge, these companies actually charge a fee to enable express pay because you're creating this extra, you know, extra thing that you want it. And you're creating them to have to do another process. Well, that's how it works. So that's one way is to be like a driver. Another way, ladies and gentlemen, that you can actually make money on your phone is to sign up for some of these task services. Uh, there's one service out there, uh, research, that will actually uh, pay you to do things like maybe shop for people. There's actually one service out there that will let you be a shopper. Uh, another service out there will let you be more of a task person. Maybe you'll go to the dry cleaners, things like that. But they're not paying a lot of money to let you know. An average task is 5 or $10, okay? Now, these people are not tipping very well from what my friends have told me. They're getting a couple dollars. So again, and remember, you've got to add up the cost of your car, your car washes. All this stuff has to be factored in. So it's not a bad short-term gig for somebody that's looking to make some money out of college or somebody that needs some income. However, it's not a very good long-term beneficial thing, especially if you keep getting new cars and, um, you know, the thing I found with some of these services when I've taken them, I'm always very respectful of people's cars because I want them to be respectful of my car. But what I found is that some of the cars when I would get, you know, when I would, somebody else would be getting out and I'd be getting in after them, they would bang the car like, you know, it was a piece of junk. And I think that's a little bit wrong. And um, the, the bottom line is that, you know, when you're in the car, some people, some drivers will talk to me, others won't. Some people are cordial, some people ask you about the temperature, and some people just want to provide the ride and that's it. Um, that's, that's what it's about, you know. So I guess it depends. You know? So that's one thing. So you can be a task runner, if you will. There's other services out there that let you pick up food. So you can literally go and pick up food at fast food and other restaurants, like, uh, I'm not going to mention the names, you can go and get sandwiches, etc. And then you'd pick them up and have to drive them out. Now, the thing about this, again, is you're not getting paid, ladies and gentlemen, per hour. Some of these companies are saying, hey, you know, we're going to figure your hourly should be roughly $12, so we're going to make sure you get at least $12 an hour. Now, that sounds great, ladies and gentlemen, but remember something, you're not getting paid for your gash, okay? The only way I see these services really work out is if you go to a restaurant and there's 10 orders there, hypothetically. You pick up the 10 orders. Now you go in line to those 10 people, and each one of those orders, let's say they pay you $5 for a drop, okay, plus a tip. So you do the math on that. Five times 10, you be $50, but that's not the norm. And with a lot of these companies, they're, they're lining so many drivers up there that – the money's getting scattered, you know, quite a bit around. And again, they're all independent contractor type positions. So we've got that. We've also got uh, tasks where you have to go to like a, a Walmart or a store and do a price check or a price match. There's other companies out there that will, and they have all have their own app. Another one out there will let you go out there and do, um, let's say, uh, insurance checking on cars. And they'll pay you a flat fee, but you have to do some details. So They'll give you some more money, but you have to actually do some more stuff like measure, et cetera, and, and things like that. So there is money to be made there. Uh, the question is, you know, is, is it worth it to you? That's what you have to look at. Are the jobs going to be in your local area? I guess that's something you really have to consider. But there are things to do out there for people that want to make money using their, using their apps. Uh, these are apps they can download. They can go online and they can query things like, you know, um, make money with iPhone or make money, um, you know, different things like – so delivery drivers are a lot different than they used to be because now you don't have to be an employee to be a delivery driver. You can be a 1099 because the delivery drivers were getting 8 or $9 an hour. But you see – and then their sales – then there was the um, – let's say the um, – what do you call it? The taxes that had to be paid on it, right? Well, now it doesn't work like that anymore. When they're independent contractors, now you have to pay that out of your pocket. 
but you can still deduct the expenses, as we we're saying. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, stay right where you are. We're going to have a quick break, and then I'll be right back, and we'll talk some more about how you can make money with your iPhone and Android. Computers always slow at your home or office. Pop-ups always appearing. Setting up smart devices like your iPhone, thermostats, downloading apps, and much more. Mention code JRC001 and receive a PC tweak for only $49.99. New clients only, please. Visit JMOR.com now. So visit JMOR.com now and definitely take advantage of that PC tweak uh, for only $49.99 for new clients only. Uh, Definitely a great way to speed up your computer. And before I get back into how to make more money using the Internet of Things of technology and devices that you have right in your own home and office, I want to talk to you about something um, that's pretty interesting. Okay, And this uh, type of thing, when we talk about, you know, we talk about technology and we talk about, you know, making money and the Internet of Things, what if there was a way, ladies and gentlemen... Okay, for you to be able to send messages to other cell phones. Well, <laughs> I want to let you know that uh, Jay Moore has actually um, started doing this um, about a week ago, and we have a relationship with a national partner that allows us to send SMS messages to people's phones in the area that have actually opted in allow us to do that. So I thought that was an interesting thing. So uh, PC Tweaks, uh, only forty nine ninety nine ninety nine to start off as new clients. You know, a lot of times when somebody thinks that they have a virus and they've gone through every way to Sunday and said, hey, my computer is not working right because I got a virus or spyware. But, you know, they've gone through all the spyware checks. They've booted in safe mode. They've boot, uh, made a, um, a bootable USB or bootable um, CD that they had an ISO for, and they've run, a, um, let's say, a, a, a scan that runs before the computer starts using another operating system like a, a PE bar, uh, Windows XP, Windows 7 scanner, um, or they've used a Linux shell or something like that. You know, th- those, those seem pretty interesting. But suppose you did all of that, okay, and you removed some cookies, but your computer's still not working right. So, did you check to have, see if you have enough space on your computer? Do you know what happens to a lot of people, and I bet they don't even know this? They install another device driver. They don't uninstall that device driver. Okay? And if the device driver is not installed properly, and it conflicts with another resource, guess what's going to happen? Your computer is going to seem like you have a virus. Your computer is going to keep tagging and freezing Every so many seconds, you're like, gee, why is it so slow? Is it this? Is it that? And you'll be spinning your head. Is it my Wi-Fi? Is it my wireless? Is it my Ethernet? What's going on? And it's not that you're doing anything wrong. It's that when you put a new piece of hardware on your computer, especially if you don't call a company like ours, you need to make sure that you remove all of the drivers that were running that particular piece of equipment, printer, uh, phone, whatever it is, and make sure not only have you removed the remnants of them, but make sure the directories are all gone. And if you're still having issues, make sure the registry doesn't have any more links to that. If you have questions, you can always contact those people's uh, specific tech support. And you'll find a lot of companies out there, I'm not going to mention the names, but a lot of printing companies out there that have cell printers don't want to get involved with the registry. Or if they do, they say, look, we'll do this, but you know, um, we're not responsible for this. We'll tell you what to do, but we're not responsible for having you do this or something. They want to make sure you back it up and because people can really screw up their computer if they don't know what they're doing with their registry. They can just blow things away. But, you know, it's not something that a lot of people will pay attention to because they think, oh, I got a virus. And you remember from the call we did a few weeks ago about that gentleman over from India. Well, we're going to have another one uh, pretty soon. We're actually going to do um, a call. And then when we do the video, okay, um, we're actually, when we do it on YouTube, we're not just going to have our blank screen. We're going to have a video of the gentleman um, actually controlling my computer. And I'm going to have a whole bunch of nonsense on there. But there's one little secret. The secret is he thinks he's talking to my computer, but he's actually talking to a virtual machine. <laughs> I click one button, and the whole computer that he thinks he's destroyed, I just click it, and I can just 
toss it out and click another button and rebuild the whole machine. So a virtual machine, ladies and gentlemen, not to get too off topic, but a virtual machine is a computer where you can bolt, build the components and you can power it on like you would a regular computer, but you just click on a button, like a, it's like a piece of software. So a virtual machine is a piece of software that actually you'll see it booting like a computer and everything. And you're like, oh gee, this is a computer, but it's not. It's a virtual machine, but it's running just like a computer would boot. So it's pretty neat. And to everyone else, when you do everything like you have a network card or whatever you're doing, everything appears like you're in that particular machine. And no one would ever know that you're on a virtual machine. That's what's really cool about it. So the only thing they can screw up is that virtual machine. I think that is absolutely amazing. So we're going to do that. Uh, I don't know. We may do that closer to the end of the summer. Um, I also talked to you about Jason. Uh, I'll be talking with him soon. I think we're probably going to do Jason uh, probably right after the 4th of July. We're probably going to get uh, Jason on. Uh, before the end of July, and we're going to talk to him about uh, technology that uh, makes their golf course and what can make other golf courses uh, more productive and help them stay in business. Because let's face it, when you're dealing with a golf course or any business, um, whether you stay in business has to deal with your overhead, You know how much money you're spending, how much money you're making, what is your bottom line. And uh, if your members aren't producing you the profits, then how are you going to raise those fees? You have to increase their food minimums that they have to spend every year. If they don't spend them, they just get charged it. Do you have to solicit more to guests so that you can reach it? Now, a lot of comp a lot of golf courses don't want to go to guests because they want to be private and be kind of snobby. But the problem with that is is that if they want to assess everyone of the $300 or $400 and they don't want to pay that, well, now they got to go get some guests. Okay, So sometimes the guest membership can make up another $20,000. And that would have to be assessed to the members of, let's say, the club that might have 500 and some people. So it doesn't seem like a lot, but trust me, uh, when, when you have um, a group of people, and even though it seems you know, very, uh, very innocent, you, know, you take, you take 20, let's say $20,000, okay? And you divide that, let's say, around 568 um, members, okay? 35, 20 now. That doesn't seem like a lot, but, you know, any little bit can make somebody complain. Any little bit can make somebody complain. So, I know that sounds a little bit, a little bit, a little bit funny, um, but it's the truth. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I think um, you're getting the understanding about technology and where we're going. And technology is definitely making a very big impact with us. And the other thing I want you to understand is that with technology, so now we're using it, we can use it to, to make money. We can use it to file things like our, if something ever happens to your car, car God forbid, you can use it to file your, your, uh, your claim a lot easier. You can use it to check status. Uh, 411 now, I think it's 511, now has an app you can download. It even goes into driver mode and stuff like that. The only caveat I have for a lot of these companies that do these driving apps and these apps, they have not made them comply with the standards for our state and federal laws for requiring us to, people to not hold cell phones. They should make the app so that it can talk to the car. Now, they do when they give directions and stuff, but I'm talking about you know, they're making the person actually press the button. So when they pick the person up, yes, they pick up the phone, they pick them up. But they should make it more that because like for example let's say you're driving and they get an alert somebody has to stop or pick the phone up and that's a problem you're not supposed to hold the phone in your your hand in fact I, they, they said the one slogan phone in the right ticket in the left where you got your phone in the right you're getting the ticket in the left it's only time the ticket's coming in the left <laughs> just don't want to know when it's coming and I think they got to do a better job with voice commands. I think that would be great. That would really make things a lot easier. We're going to see more type applications that are going to be like this. Um, the enterprise for people making money is definitely changing. We're also going to see a lot less salespeople that are going to be employees and more that are going to be contractors. Why? People want their freedom. But people want their money too. But they want to have their freedom because... If they can do that and companies let them have that with some minor little things like not forcing to set a schedule because you can't force to set a schedule when you're a contractor. That's why all these companies say, well, gee, you can work as much as you like. We'd like you to work as much, but they can't tell you to work X hours. Why? Because you're a contractor. And they're not allowed to tell you to work X hours because you're not an employee. <laughs> so the other thing is that these companies don't have to pay. They don't have to pay um, – 
Social Security and all these other benefits back to the state because you're a 1099. So you're having to pay basically both sides of the tax. You're paying a lot when you're doing it yourself as opposed to when the company does it. So it's, it's an interesting um, world that we're starting to evolve into. There are um, apps out there that will allow you to do things like, um, let's say, for example, you know, we already know you can sell stuff online, like we're familiar with eBay and let go and all these other types, right? But I think what we need to understand is that apps are going to keep changing as the dynamic of people's personality changes. And I'll hold it right there, and we'll be right back. We've got one more quick commercial, and I'll see you back in a minute. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You are tuned in live to the J. Moore Tech Talk Show right here on the Starcom Radio Network. You can call us during the show between 9 p.m. Eastern to 9.57 p.m. right here at 973-826-0981. Of course, we welcome your calls anytime. However, if you do call outside of the show, we won't be in the studio. We won't be here to take your call and we don't have voicemail on our studio lines because we would just get so many calls. But uh, we do hope that more of you will call in soon because we have lots of great stuff happening here. And I know from looking at our dashboards, we have quite a bit of listeners uh, that are online tonight. So that's great. I wish some of those people would actually call us at our number, 973-826-0981, and um, call us and you know tell us their thoughts because uh, technology is going to evolve. It's going to change. And one of two things are going to happen to you. A, you're going to get on the bandwagon, and you're going to join with technology and start to become a part of it. Or B, you're just going to sit back and do nothing. Or the third thing that's going to happen is you're going to let technology really seem like it's ruining your life. So they're all states of mind, right? Whether it ruins its life, that's all something in your mind. Is it helping us? Life is good, right? But we have to, everything starts from within and we have to have a positive attitude. Or are we just not going to be part of the movement and just just not, not let it phase us? Either way, it doesn't bother us. You know, it's just going to not phase us. I, I think there's a lot. Even when you get somebody to go to a smartphone that had one of those, I'm going to call them dumb, but those um, uneducated uh, flip phones, um, or not as robustly equipped, I guess would be the politically correct way to say. Um, Feature-rich uh, phones, just a simple uh, flip phone. Technology has a lot of benefits. But I think if you're not into technology, and or if you know someone and you want them to get more into technology, what I always say you have to do with people is this. If you focus your time and your attention trying to make yourself known and be liked, well, you've already won in your eyes, but really you haven't. And you're going to drive the other person away because you're going to seem so about yourself that you don't really care about the other person. If you would just listen to the other person or be interested in them genuinely, you're going to find out that that person is actually going to find you very interesting. Now, isn't that weird? See, when we show interest in someone else, which is what we want to do, the other person say, gee, that person was so interesting to talk to. And all I do was say a few words. They got mesmerized or almost hypnotized with the fact that you were so interested in their life or their story. And when you can do that or when you can learn about technology or give someone technology that is going to help them with a problem in their life, maybe they have a medical issue right now, and you can use technology to help them report something better or whatever it is. Maybe they're not exercising and you get them a Fitbit and they're able to start embracing technology. If you can have somebody to become uh, closer to something they already like and have technology to embrace it, they're going to do what they normally would do, 
but they're going to love technology because it's going to help them get deeper into whatever it is they like. And that's how you get someone, for example, if you want someone to switch to an iPhone, and they say they're totally against it. There's lots of benefits, right? Bigger screen, all that. But let's say someone has touch and maybe don't care about that. Maybe they don't care about the fact of security with you know, touching your finger. Maybe they don't care about any of that, at least at the beginning. But what they do care about is checking their stocks. You can't do that from a un, uh, let's say, uh, robust or uh, not as educated uh, flip phone. Can't do it. You know, things like that. Um, contacts are easier. Texts are easier to read. You can get someone to understand, hey, you know, they like socks or they like a certain app. Get them to like the app first. Once they start liking the app, you're going to find that they're gradually going to move into wanting to be part of the iPhone or the Android, whatever it is. So that's what it is. If you throw something at someone and they have no interest in the phone itself, that's because you're going about it the wrong way. You want to find the thread or the sliver of interest that that person has in a subject. Find an app that talks to that person's interests or feeds it or fuels it, and you're not only going to have someone that's going to be your friend, but you're going to have somebody that's going to be deeply committed and wanting to learn the iPhone. You see, a lot of people out there, I think, become intimidated with technology. They feel that they have to learn everything today. That's not the case, ladies and gentlemen. You have your entire life. You want to take things step by step because if you can take them step by step, number one, you're going to remember more. Number two, you're not going to become frustrated. You know why people become frustrated? They try to do something, they can't do it. Well, Joe did it, Mike did it. Don't worry about what Joe did or what Mike did. It doesn't matter. We're all different people. We all learn it different ways. You might be he. You might be a better carpenter. You might be a better engineer. But he may not be able to 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 cut wood the way you can or engineer circus the way you can. Right? It's all different. Everyone's different. Everyone has a very uh, sp special uniqueness to them. That's what makes us. Uh, we never know where we're going with these shows. You know that. Um, that's what makes us attracted to other people, whether it's a friend, partner, significant other. People always feel they got to be exactly like the other person. You can be a little bit different. Um, you know, you don't have to have a perfect body. You don't have to have perfect hair. People like you for you. People like you for your heart, for the qualities that you exhibit. It's the whole package. And anyone that doesn't do that is actually superficial. But you're going to find that most people in the world that you're going to connect with, they're not superficial. They're really interested in getting to know you. And when you make the effort to get to know someone else and just let them talk first, you're going to find out next time that they're going to be wanting to do that back to you so that they can let you talk. But you be the hero first. You be the one that says, look, well, you do, you do gardening or you do, uh, you do engineering of planes. That's interesting. What got you into that field? You know, what made you as a kid get into uh, aerospace? Make it fun. Have a little game with it. But be sincere with what you ask. Don't ask questions because you're, you're for false motives. That's going to get you in trouble. Be genuine. The questions will flow naturally. And you will find that you'll have a friend, but you'll also have someone that is actually going to become interested in you. So remember, become interested in someone else first. Let them do the talking. I have to tell you, our show's almost over tonight, and I think we did a great job with our audio tonight. I think we got all those things fixed. We got some new audio boards and some new stuff, and we're still working on improving things. And we're going to probably be working on some more effect studios and stuff like that. But um, really hap happy. Uh, we're getting some other mics in and some other stuff to make this even better. So again, do appreciate you listening to the Jay Moore Tech Talk Show right here on the Starcom Radio Network. It is Thursday nights. Um, that's 9 p.m. to 9.57 p.m. And when you're thinking about technology, whether you're going to buy a toaster or you're going to buy a thermostat, and you want something, but the other person doesn't want it, or maybe you make group decisions in your home, find out what the other person wants. And once you've done that, then you can honestly 
and with integrity find reasons that are going to support your case and make the other person or tip the scale so the other person is going to want to do that. So that's kind of the way it works. I've given you kind of like a psychology lesson here, I know. So we never know what we're going to learn here at the Jay Moore Tech Talk Show. So we can do things like uh, there's like one company that does dashing. There's another company that does uh, pickups. There's another company that you can do um, uh, different types of uh, – so like I said, I so mentioned, I mentioned driving. You can do price checks. You can do uh, little tasks in the town. Uh, and some of these things are not hard. You could do insurance checks for vehicles that are being turned in. And all these companies that have these opportunities. There's another company that does things like turning in cable boxes. And what do they use? They use an app. Uh, I know this one company that wants you to go pick up cable boxes from people that have either canceled their service or Let's say uh, they haven't canceled yet, but they're supposed to be giving up their boxes because they're kind of being commandeered from them. Um, and the way these companies work is they pay you uh, a fee for every box that you kind of repossess. Yeah, sounds like a way to almost get yourself well. We won't go there. But uh, they use an app. And again, apps are not that complicated. They're not as hard to develop. And by putting something into an app, capturing some data – it's a way of keeping track of GPS. Um, you know, you can get pictures, audio, etc. And it's just a way of keeping your mobile workforce all together and keeping tabs on them and getting the information you need so that you can facilitate sales, so that you can move on to the next stage. So there's lots of things that could be done uh, by using your mobile device. You're going to see already, we're starting to see you go to a store right now. And if you want to find something in a particular store, you download their app. Okay, It tells you what aisle it's in and stuff like that. So we're definitely using technology uh, to propel us forward. And I see a lot of good examples with technology that are actually going to enhance the quality of our lives. Remember, there's always going to be people out there that may not be so gung-ho or enthralled about using technology okay don't use it <laughs> it's a choice do you want to drive a two uh two-door car four-door car do you want a sports car do you want a, a cadillac do you want a buick a ford do you want a lamborghini do you want acura do you want a mercedes do you want a land rover do you want a range rover do you want a bentley okay do you want an alfa romeo what do you want right it's all about choice. It's all about preference. And um, I think as far as feeling comfortable with something, the, the key that I can give you is if you're trying to help someone learn technology or you really want to embrace it because you feel it's going to improve the quality of their life, it's okay to suggest it. But don't push it down their throat because they're going to resent you for it. It might be the greatest thing. But if they don't make the decision to own it themselves, everything you do is going to seem like – and it's going to push them away. So I know I've given you a lot of messages tonight, and it's not just been about technology, but somehow we get off topic, and uh, you know we are – we're people, right? So we talk about people, and I love it when technology can help us as human beings – become better people you know sometimes it happens by accident and sometimes it happens by uh, a plan you know technology can help keep us more organized um, be by being more structured technology can definitely do a lot for us but remember what i said and i keep saying this over and over again ladies and gentlemen technology is great but when you use technology, make sure that it empowers your life and others, and you will go far, and everyone around will love technology. When you use technology to control people or even control your life, that's a problem. And that's when technology is going to be seen as a big brother. I think we're all adults, and we all have a responsibility in life. And I think when we show people that we are responsible and we can use technology in the right way, then I think we're going to start to see technology being used in a way 
that's really treating us like adults. When people out there try to harness technology to harm others and make it a weapon or something like that, um, then that's a problem. So technology is definitely going to be a gateway in our world, just like community, communication is a gateway in our world. And by using these two modalities, communication and technology, embracing them and bringing them together, we can build a whole new world that um, can do things that are infinite and immense. And remember, the possibilities to your life are endless. Uh, the, only the only limitation to what you can do is your imagination. So remember what Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, then you can do it. If you can dream it, you definitely can live it. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a great show. I've got to run, and we'll see you next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Be sure to tell your friends and associates about the Jay Moore Tech Talk Show right here on the Starcom Radio Network, 973-826-0981. If you missed our show, just go ahead and walk on over to jmore.com, click on social, Jay Moore Radio, and you'll see tonight's show, uh, actually hear tonight's show up there a little later tonight or tomorrow. Thanks so much, and have a wonderful weekend. I'm John Morley from the Jay Moore Tech Talk Show. invite you to join us again next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Be sure to tell your friends, colleagues, and associates about the J. Moore Tech Talk Show. We're here every Thursday night on the Starcom Radio Network at 9 p.m. Eastern. If you missed any of our shows, you can just walk on over to jmor.com, click on social, and then under J. Moore Radio, just click on previously recorded episodes. We'll see you next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Have a great week.